Let's do a little bit of maintenance and finish up this ninja. Hello my friends and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today we're going to finish up this Kawasaki Ninja 250 that I picked up as a project uh, on the previous video, which I will link. We got it all together, got it running, and uh, sorted out a few things. I already have some interest in this motorcycle, so I'd like to finish it up and get it on the market. Of course, so I can start my next uh, project. I just can't be without them for some reason, but... What I'd like to finish on this thing is uh, do an oil change and filter. And I was lucky enough that I had a filter in my stash of parts already. Uh, I want to flush the brake fluid front and back. And we also want to take a look at the speedometer, figure out what's going on with that. Because everything else in this bike works except for the speedometer. The odometer is working. So that tells me that um, something's just a little bit wonky in the speedometer and we'll take a look at it. We'll pull it off and see what we can figure out. So let me get set up for an oil change and I'll show you how that works on this bike and we'll go from there. I got my little budget Ninja up here on my Harbor Freight motorcycle stand. If you've got room for one of these in your garage and you work on your motorcycle, I highly recommend getting one. So the first step before you do an oil change is of course you want to warm up the engine if possible. So I've been running it for a few minutes on the Ninja 250. In order to get to the oil drain plug and the oil filter, you need to remove the lower cowl. So on this one, it's gonna be these two screws, a fastener here and a fastener there. Um, I'm not saying every Ninja 250 is going to be the same because I just used some of these are just random Fastener, so you may not have an Allen head here. It might be a screwdriver or it might be a bolt. I don't remember what factory stuff is supposed to be. I just tried to make it look okay and match on um, side to side. So we'll take that off and I'll show you the next step. Your next step will be to locate the oil drain plug, which is right there, and the filter, and that's right there. This does not have a spin on cartridge style filter to drop this whole unit and then replace the paper filter inside of it. So I've already loosened this. And of course the, the pipes are hot. Make sure your drain pan is underneath where you want it to be. And away with the Exxon Valdez. There you go. It's not a uh, oil change video unless you get your hands dirty. Let her drain. Okay, hopefully you can see what's going on here. This is the oil filter. The filter and the drain plug are both 17 millimeter. There you go. And that's always going to be a mess. Usually once it comes loose, you can just spin this outer piece here. Because it's got an O-ring in there, it kind of sticks to itself here. I really hate these old paper style filters like this. Usually you don't see stuff like this on bikes that are uh, newer than the 90s. Most of those have a regular spin on filter. But the Ninja 250 is based off of an old 80s bike. Okay, and there's the filter. Here's a closer look at the filter. And then uh, here's the New filter I bought, you can see with a brand name on this one. Yeah, there really isn't a brand name. I just bought, these are some no-name uh, bulk filters I bought a long time ago. I just happen to have some still laying around. And usually inside of the boxes, you'll get some O-rings. And sometimes on these bulk filters, they are not the correct ones. What you do is you pull the old filter off and sometimes there's an o-ring on this uh shaft there actually probably is down underneath here i don't change those usually unless they are leaking 
and then you also have this o-ring here and you got to make sure that it's the same size like I said sometimes these bulk filters this one looks a little bit on the large side so I'm probably not going to change it even though you know um, proper maintenance techniques you should change that every time uh, I want to give the disclaimer that uh, my videos are showing what I do in my garage and I do know the right way sometimes you just have to do it the way that you have to do it put the new filter on and put the little cap back on and then we're gonna spin that all back in there on another should do it maintenance practice you also should replace the aluminum or brass crush washer on the drain plug every time now I have a drawer full of those and of course I don't have one that is this size so I probably should improve my uh, quantity and quality of the washers that I have I just don't have the right ones so there you have it I can tell you how it should be done and how it is going to be done today Okay, everything's back up in there and tightened up. Uh, once again, on another, this is gonna be maintenance malpractice day here. So if you're if you're a professional mechanic and follow all the rules, you can blast me all you'd like, but uh, you can look in the manual and get the proper torque for the filter and the drain bolt, or you can utilize the time-honored German torque, which is gut and tight. I got it gut and tight. And on another controversial subject, we're going to top off the oil. Some motorcycles are really nice. It's written right here how much oil it takes, 1.9 liters. And of course, follow your owner's manual and utilize the proper oil. Or in Tom's Tinkering and Adventures Garage, you can utilize diesel truck engine oil. That is uh, your choice, and please feel free to utilize the oil that you would like. I am not recommending or saying negative things about any types of motorcycle oil. It is your motorcycle, so please do as you choose. I use diesel oil every bike in my garage, and even the Rhino there. They all run it, and uh, so far so good, but maybe I'm a ticking time bomb. So please read your owner's manual and follow the guidelines therein or pay the consequences such as I have. So we're topping off the oil and then we're going to start it and make sure we don't have any leaks from uh, the used O-rings and the used crush washer. It appears I have defied the odds again. There's no leaking from the used crush washer and the used O-ring, but... Please change them if you have them available. You know, if you're planning ahead, it's a vehicle you have in your garage, just order them up and you'll have them on hand. It's not like an oil change is a surprise. You should know it's coming. Uh, this motorcycle I didn't know was gonna be here until a day or two ago, and I'd like it out of here, but you know what? It's gonna be just fine. On to the next task at hand, which is going to be bleeding these front brakes. Now, if any of y'all have worked on a motorcycle with master cylinder like this, you know that these screws can be a real bear to get out. So number one problem is there's steel screws usually going into an aluminum housing. There's brake fluid involved in here, which causes additional corrosion. Um, there are these flush head screws and they are also JIS, which I touched on before, Japanese industrial standard, which is slightly different from a Phillips head so that tends to make them cam out the screwdriver wants to um, push up and out of there and you can see this one focus a little bit you can see it's already a little bit corroded as is that one um, and this one looks to be a little bit damaged so the first thing I like to do is just tap on them a little bit with a hammer you don't want to beat the hell out of it but just tap on them a little bit with a hammer um, that will loosen up any corrosion inside of there the next thing you can do is utilize your JIS uh, tip screwdriver if you have one. And if you have a speed handle, 
This is uh, going to be the best bet, really, especially if you have a JIS tip on it, which I don't believe that one is. But this almost always gets them out because what you can do is get this in here. I'm trying to do this one hand while I'm holding this. And you can push down with a lot of pressure right here and there. And this thing's up on the jack, so I can't really get up there. But pushing down with that pressure helps. But you can see I'm not putting much pressure on here, and it's already wanting to cam out. So you want to try to be ahead of the ball game because once you start to strip out, it can be a real nightmare. And you might get to the point where you use an impact driver to try to get these out. And I'm hoping I don't have to show you all how an impact driver works today. So I am going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this uh, tip off of here and I'm going to use the hammer to tap this straight into here, which will help a little bit too. So I'll see if I have success. If not, I'll come back and let you know. Okay, after tapping that uh, screwdriver socket into there, and then I jumped up and stood on the uh, stand here and put some force down, those two both came out okay. Now, the reason I like to... Uh, flush this fluid is because it doesn't happen very often. This thing didn't give me any reason to suspect that the braking was bad. It braked just fine, but uh, um, this fluid is supposed to be clear. And you can see that's definitely not clear. So what I like to do is utilize a syringe and remove as much of this as possible, then clean out the reservoir, fill it with some fresh fluid, and then I'll be pumping the brake and bleeding it out in my little bleeding container right there. So if you've never seen bleeding brakes, I'm really not in a good position to do it here with the bike up here, but I just kind of wanted to show you the reason why I like to do this. And then I'll be doing the same on the rear brake, which the master cylinder is up underneath this cover. That looks a little bit nicer. And now I can actually tell it's in there too from the window here. Before that thing was so dirty, I couldn't tell if the window was all clouded up or not, but you can see the bubble at the top, so we know that there's fluid in there. The rear uh, master cylinder reservoir is underneath this side cover, and we're just going to do the same thing on this. You're going to pump the brakes, pump the brakes, hold them, crack the bleeder valve, the brake will go all the way down, close the bleeder valve, let the brake up and continue. Make sure you do not let your reservoir get empty because otherwise you'll be introducing air into the system. So I cleaned this whole thing out, wiped it out, put some fresh fluid in there. So we're gonna bleed this out, probably one, maybe two reservoirs full, just to make sure the line and everything is all flushed out and then top it off. Now to remove this upper cowling, upper, upper fairing, of course you remove the lower one first and then on each side, there are two fasteners in the tank here that you take out. And as I said earlier, um, I cannot remember if these are supposed to be Phillips head screws or not. This is just what I had and what went into this build with the uh, scraps of the previous builds that I've done. So two on this side, two on the other side, and then the mirrors come off. There may be a plastic little cover that goes over that. It's usually missing on an older bike. Excuse me. But then uh, underneath that is an Allen head socket that comes out. Allen head uh, bolt, I mean. Use, I'm using my Allen sockets here. See, so unscrew that bolt. And then the mirror should just pull off. It's got a little locating dowel. And at this point, let me see if I can get you in the stand here. At this point, the cowling should be about ready to come off. Um, it just pulls straight out. Now, the only thing you have to worry about is the connections for the uh, turn signals. Inside of here, uh, right down there, that's your connections for your turn signals. It's pull out really easily. 
They're just bullet connectors. These pulled out too. And then the whole unit, oops. That was just some of those little washers that uh, mount in the body here. Now the whole unit's off. The next step to get this uh, instrument cluster off is to remove the headlight. There's four bolts, two on each side. I've already taken those out and we're gonna set that down. We're just gonna kinda let that hang here. And there are one, two, three, four bolts. We're gonna disconnect this speedometer cable and we'll just unplug these. And I'll set this up on the workbench here in a minute. I've worked on a lot of these Ninja 250 speedometers because uh, since they're beginner bikes, a lot of times they get crashed and these things are usually broken. I'm really surprised to see this one has, uh, this motorcycle has been tipped over and it's not crashed very hard, obviously. But usually at least one of these um, mounting pegs is broken. So to get the face off, there is, oh, face off. That's a good movie, huh? Nicolas Cage. All right, one, two, three, four, and John Travolta. There's four screws that you need to take out, remove, and that should get us to the point where we have this housing separated from the outer black plastic housing. And if you remember, this one was cracked on the face of it. So I'm hopeful that just that crack has, uh, that cracked plastic is holding the uh, speedometer needle from turning. That's my hope at this point, and I'm allowed to have a little bit of hope in my life, I believe. Let's see what we got. And I don't think this plastic piece is separate. Uh, you know, you can order it separate or anything. It would be nice if you could, but I don't think you can. And there we go. Oh, this thing is like stiff. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to just try to uh, put some lubrication in there and see if I can't get it to... Yeah, it's really stiff feeling. We'll see if we can't lubricate in there. Um, and maybe I can... Yeah, I can get the whole thing out right here. So let's see if we can get the whole thing out. We can get some lubrication on the back side of it. I think that a speedometer probably should have like a graphite, like a dry lubrication on it. But uh, at this point, since it's kind of frozen up, it's probably gonna require a little bit more than that to get it operational. When I wrote it, I could see that the uh, odometer was turning so I know that that portion is at least fine. There we go. And we're out skis. So now I'll get in here and see if I can't figure out where the, where the holdup is on this thing, why it's so stiff. Well, I messed around with this thing for quite a while. I sprayed some um, penetrating oil in there and then I tried to flush everything out with some isopropyl alcohol but it still had a stiff spot on it and it just didn't seem to want to get uh, freed up and then I started looking at the clues to this thing so obviously something hit it here on the front and broke that and broke the reset knob the little uh, place where the reset knob goes in there was bent and broken I removed this because it don't really need it anymore so that told me it took some impact uh, like kind of forward on this thing Well, what was happening was this little drum Was binding up on the housing behind it a little bit So I set it down Here and I pressed against that housing a little bit with a I was just used my screwdriver. That's what I used and freed it up And now you can see And if we ever want to go a hundred and 20, it'll go 120. I don't think it's quite exactly right. It's still a little tiny bit sticky, but as long as it is as long as it works, we'll be okay with that. So we're gonna put this back together and reinstall it. Just like all the manuals say, 
Assembly is reverse of disassembly. Yeah, it's really that easy. The hardest part is these uh, bullet connectors, like I pointed out inside of here. Excuse me, inside of here. Uh, it's a little bit tricky reaching your, your hand into that space and getting them. Uh, maybe if it was uh, down off the stand and you turn the handlebars to the left or the right, it might be easier. Of course, I have it on the stand, so that's one thing that is more difficult. The last item I want to address on this before I'm probably going to list it for sale is the uh, front fender. The front fender is uh, loose and it appears there are two bolts missing on this side. The bolts on the other side are in there. So I am going to have to drop it off the stand, move it over here, put it back up on the center stand and uh, hopefully, well, actually I might actually do it on the stand here. What I might do is slide it back a little bit because I have this strap here so if i get it out of the uh the shoe so it's on the stand but back a little bit farther then i can use this strap to uh hold the front up enough to get the front wheel off so let's figure out what i'm going to do with it and we'll be right back okay so i did exactly like i said i scooted the bike back a bit still on the center stand uh, i jacked it up a little bit more hooked this strap up right to the uh it's actually just the front cowl mount, but all it's doing is just holding the weight back on the back wheel enough to uh, get the front wheel off the ground and to take the front wheel off. It's a 17 millimeter on this side, 22 millimeter on this side. There's a cotter pin that you have to remove, split pin, whatever it may be known as in your region of the world. And all things look like they're going well. Sometimes those uh, axles can be in there pretty tight. And uh, that can be a sign of other issues. Yeah, it might be enough room to get up under here, get these bolts in. If not, I'm just gonna have to roll the wheel forward. And we'll check the wheel bearings and all that stuff before we put it back together, along with the front brake. Still wasn't quite perfect. You can't quite get the wheel all the way out because I should have went back a little bit more, but then I would have been off the ramp. But uh, I was able to get in there. Let's see if we can see the brake pads. There you go. Lots of brake pad left. Wheel bearings feel pretty good, so we're going to reassemble this thing and... Drop her off the uh, stand. There she is in all her glory. Doesn't look a whole lot different. Um, I was able to take it down my driveway. Couldn't go any farther because there's a trench being cut down there for new water pipes, but I was able to take it down my driveway and back up and guess what works? The speedometer. Speedometer works. We got fresh oil and a brake flush front and back and that is going to probably do it for this ninja 250 probably by the time i publish this video by the time i get it edited and published this bike will be gone i imagine uh, i rarely hold on to one of these for very long i get them reasonably priced and i price them less than the rest of them on the market so that a new rider can get a decent little bike and get going so that's why they don't stick around for too long in my garage i like i like these little bikes fun to work on parts are reasonable as i said before and uh nothing like seeing the joy in a new rider's eye when they get to see that bike and throw a leg over it and ride it and uh, the thing is a lot of the young especially the young men who want to ride a motorcycle are always looking at say a uh, sport bike 600 or even a 1000 for their first bike well if you tip over a r6 or a Gixxer 1000 you can cause about a thousand dollars worth of plastic damage easily and that's about what a motorcycle like this is going to sell for so it just makes a lot more sense to uh, get a couple of those stupid little parking lot tip overs done on a bike like this that even if the plastic is scratched or broken, you're gonna be able to uh, still get five, six, eight hundred dollars for it as long as it runs good. And then move on to your 
dream bike three to six months down the road. But hey, not everyone has patience. Not everyone thinks rationally. Eh, it's life. What are you gonna do? I can't tell anyone what to do. I try, but it doesn't really work. All right, if you're digging what I'm putting out here, give me that thumbs up, even if it's a greasy thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down wherever it's at. Sometimes these videos are the opposite direction down here somewhere. And uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me what I'm doing right or wrong. I'll respond one way or the other. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.